Welcome to the Peace Over Pain podcast with Dr. Kevin Reese, where we examine the body as a whole unit and move people from health burdens to health miracles. So get your questions ready, because the show starts now. Good morning, and welcome to the Peace Over Pain podcast. I'm your host, Joe Lachance, and it is July 19, 2022. I'm here with the author of Peace Over Pain, Dr. Kevin W. Reese. Welcome, Dr. Reese. How are you today? I'm good, man. Happy New Day. And uh, yeah, it's July 19th already, huh? I know, I know. It's, wow. it's getting in there. The summer's halfway over. It is. So. Hey, before we get started, I just want to remind people that we'll be taking your questions at around 1030. So if you have a question for Dr. Reese, please leave it in the comments below. All right. Now that we got that out of the way, and I hope people do ask a lot of questions today. Okay, so maybe someone will have the courage to actually zoom in. Zoom in. There is a link down there in the description so you could zoom in. We did have somebody last one, so you never know. Yeah. So we're going to talk today about, I guess you would call it one of the micro methods within the macro method. Mm -hmm. But at this one, uh, you know, I think there are two keystones in the micro method, the macro method of uh, the clinical nutrition, and that would be the 90 essential nutrients and the poor four foods. Yeah. I would say those are the cornerstones. And then after that, it's pretty much tailored to the, the client. So um, the poor four foods, let's get into it right away. A lot of people have had a lot of questions about what they are and why should you avoid them? So Kevin, give us a rundown. What are the poor four foods? Gluten oil fried and fake, gluten oil fried and fake, gluten oil fried and fake, gluten oil fried and fake. Ah, could you slow it down just a little bit? <laughs> gluten <laughs> oil. oil fried and fake. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, I, I do it like that so that people hopefully download it into their mind. I also want to. I also think I wrote a song too the other week. Maybe we'll have some like Sonny sing it at some point. But gluten is a protein found in wheat, barley, rye, and oats. And it, you know, it, it blocks absorption in your stomach. It, it ruins your villi in the stomach lining. So we want to get off of that because that's, a big part of what causes nutritional deficiency. And oils, well, that's the one people have trouble with. Yeah, I did. That, that creates oxidation in the body, which turns into free radical damage. And it's not the oils that are bad. It's that the oils are being exposed to the air. So if you live next to an, you know, an olive oil factory and you were getting the oil 10 minutes after it was pressed, it would be fine. But that's not the way it works. So by the time it even gets to your grocery store, it's been oxidized and now it's toxic. And this has been linked to cardiovascular disease. And so we've been programmed to think it's cholesterol, but it's not, it's oxidation. Oh. And so, you know, even something that's so-called wholesome, like a salad, you pouring olive oil on it or whatever oil on it, it doesn't matter what oil, it's turning your salad into a weapon of mass destruction. And then fried, is anything that's overcooked pretty much. Uh, down South in America, Atlanta, Tennessee, Louisiana, they have very high rates, very high rates of the sea monster and cardiovascular disease. And that's because fried food is a big part of their culture. And 
anything fried is absolutely dangerous. Anything, French fries, dangerous. Um, you know, you, when you go to the carnival and get fried dough, dangerous, that's gluten and fried. And then there's fake. And that's anything with too many ingredients, basically. Anything in a box or a package. Even pasta can be considered fake. There's no pasta tree. Right. So that, that's the way I try to teach it to people is, is there a tree? Is there a donut tree? Right? Is there a pasta tree? Is there a candy tree? How did they make gum taste like strawberries? And it, it ain't from strawberries. It's chemicals made in right. a lab. So that's fake. So you stay away from the fake stuff. And that includes processed meats, most bacon, most sausage, kielbasa. And, and I want some of our vegan friends to know that this also includes Beyond Burgers, oh, Impossible yeah. Burgers, Tofu Dogs, so, you know, they, it may be marketed as vegan and healthy, but it's processed. And when you say fake foods, we can say processed foods pretty much. Well, I, that's a great point you make, Joe. Uh, but I like staying away from the word process because yogurt is processed technically, right? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, butter is processed. You know, you can make a point that honey is processed to a certain extent. Uh, you know, um, fermented foods. That's a process. Right. 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 So I, that's why I use the word fake. Artificial is another good one. But yes, the vegan burgers, the fake meat, as, the, as it's called, are very dangerous. And not only are they fake, Joe, they're filled with oils. Right. Yeah, if you look at the label, you see oils all over it. That's right, because it's the oils Bind. that are replacing the animal fat. Right. Yeah, that would be right. a real burger. And animal fat is much healthier than oils. Right, right. That's Just like... A, it's a harsh truth for a lot of vegans. Well, yeah, the oil part was the hardest for me. Gluten... I kind of understood. I'd known about it for a while because there's a lot of, you know, research out there and there's a lot of things about the gluten and it just makes sense. The word glue is right in the, in the name, you know? So, I mean, yeah. what does it do to your body? It glues. It's like a glue and they use it for a binder in a lot of things. You see wheat gluten used in a lot of these vegan foods to make up for meat, you know? So I knew about gluten, but the oil was one of the, and you know, fried foods, that's pretty obvious, yeah. you know, especially yeah. if you understand that oil is oxidized and then here you are drenching right. this food in oil, not only oil, but hot oil. And most fried food has glue. A lot of fried food has gluten in it too, for the flouring, the, the, right. the crust or whatever. You the baking. And when you say fried, right. Do you mean pan fried or is it mostly deep fried? Well, pan fried, to a certain extent, you could pan fry. Like if you were doing a steak, for example, right? a lot of people, what, what's called sear it, right? So they cook it on both sides for a minute and a half on high. Mm -hmm. And then they let it sit for 10 minutes with no fire and just let it almost cook on its own. That's... I mean, you, that's not the frying I'm talking about. Right. You know, but. Or you fry an egg, right? But yeah, you use well, no, butter. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to fry an egg. You, you don't want to, even an omelet is too far. Right. You're losing your nutrition. That's true. You know, so, you know, what did Rocky do? <laughs> you know, he, he took the raw egg. Uh, I'm not saying do raw eggs. You don't have to, but. You know, just making the point that a lot of old school boxers and athletes would just take the whole egg. It was like a supplement. Right. Why need? Why do you need a protein shake? So. Um, and, and then okay. that's another one is protein powders. Protein powders are bad business. Bad. News. Oh. Oh, I didn't know that. 
Oh yeah, protein powders are bad news, man. You never so want to isolate protein. It's true, right? Because really what you're getting is just a protein isolate. You know, and if people know what that is, that's where they literally take a large protein molecule and isolate the the the, the heavy duty protein out of it, right? And then put and create a powder out of it. So it's it's protein, but it's not really full protein. But anyway, we're off track on that. Um, and okay, so oil, gluten, oil, fried, and fake. And I want to say this. When you eat these foods, these four foods, yeah, why do they why are they bad? They oxidize the body and give you free radical damage, which creates inflammation, which eventually creates the sea monster. And then on top of it, they're blocking absorption of the nutrients. So you got two things happening in the body by eating these four foods. Essentially, it's a very slow and tedious suicide. Mm -hmm. It will take 20, 30 years, but it will get you. And most, let's say, average Americans, right? All four of those things are pretty much in their diet. Oh, yeah. Almost every day, right? You, you can see one meal in, on, a, on the average American table. Just one meal would have all four of them in it, right? You could yeah. have a bit gluten, all four in one meal. And, and, and people don't understand the damage that that one meal could just do to them, especially if they eat that type of meal on a regular basis. Yeah, and I think slow suicide is a good way to put it. Um, yeah. And, you know, people don't think of food in that way and you know i just had a family reunion this weekend and i you know i ran into some of my cousins that are, are quite unhealthy and, it, and you know we had to talk and i'm just like dude all you got to do is get off these four foods and get your 90 essential nutrients that's like you said earlier joe that's the cornerstone that's it's just it's just basic and you know it's that simple it's so simple it, it's so simple. It's complicated. Right. 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 Because of people's habits. I mean, bread is like a staple in a lot of people's diets, right? They have it on sandwiches. They have it with their meals, uh, crackers, cake, cupcakes, all these things use wheat flour and yeah. not only wheat flour, but a lot of times oil. And, and that's what was spread out on the table at the reunion, right? You had the brownies, the cupcakes and all these things. And, and naturally people want to just start snacking. They just start snacking and they're snacking and, and they don't understand why they're on statin drugs and they don't understand why the doctor has them on these drugs. They're just, they're being led by the medical monopoly because they're misinformed. And the food monopoly that you know tells them this is great this is good for you this is you know marketing is a weapon yeah big time and and so um how do people you know like what do they do to substitute for these things in their diet now i know there's plenty of gluten-free options out there but i think we discussed on another show that you have to really look at them and see if they have oils in them Right. If they're using oils to make it. Right. And then there's always the option, of course, making your own food and using an alternative flour, which would be there's a plenty of them out there. Coconut flour, cassava flour, mm -hmm. corn flour. Um, there's a lot almond flour. There's a lot of substitute flours now because I think finally the food industry is starting to understand that. There are, there are people who need to get, not only want to get off gluten, but now need to get off gluten because of this celiac disease that they have. Right. Um, and so there are a lot of alternatives out there. So all the people who, you know, oh my God, how am I going to get off gluten? How am I, just look around. If you really look around, you can find options. And then almost, you may even find you may not really need it in your diet. You know well, what I that's, mean? That's the thing is, is if you can bring your carbohydrates down, 
you're going right. to end up healthier anyway. Right. So, right. you know, that what I tell clients is, you know, you, you still got potatoes and you still got rice. Yep. So there's your whole food starches. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Right. And, and there's a lot you can do with potatoes, you know, um, and, you know, as far as the oils go, I think what you recommended was using clarified ghee. Yeah. Clarified butter, Indian ghee. It's got a very high profile of essential fatty acids. And you can pretty much use that the same way you use butter, you know? Yeah. And it's lactose free too. Right. So there's a couple substitutes. Obviously with the fried food, they do now have air fryers. Yeah. You know, as long as you don't bread it, you, yeah. you can do an air fryer or like you say, an Instapot. If you want to cook your food that way, I think fried is hard for a lot of people to give up. I, I, I'm, I'm suspect about the air fryers. And what's that? I, I need to do more research on the air fryers, but I, I am suspect about it. I'm, um, I, I wouldn't say go do that just yet. Uh, the Instapot or pressure cookers are definitely crock pots. So yeah, yeah, they're, they're good to go. And that's how you want to cook your meat, ideally. Right. You know, that's 90% of the time. That's the only way I'll eat meat is if it comes out of a pressure cooker. Right. Now, I right. made an exception at the reunion. I had, you know, two bur three, three burgers off the grill. But just the burger, right? Right. I, I did not have the bun. And, of course, people are looking at me. They're double looking at me because they know I used to be vegan yeah so yeah. they're like oh my god you're eating meat but then they're looking closer and they're like oh you're not eating bread <laughs> i'm like that's right. right because i'm off the poor for food you know and, and you know and i constantly get compliments because i i maintain my weight now right well hey you look a lot different so okay so we, and then of course the last one the fake foods, I think pretty much people kind of know what that is. Like you said, if it comes in a box and it has more than five ingredients and it's not natural, it doesn't come from a tree. So you're not, you don't get the pop tart tree, you right. know, you know, so, <laughs> you know, you got to really stay away from those things because they're fake. They're created and they're usually loaded with chemicals, you know, the, basically. The, yeah. The best way to, the best way to communicate this, and I do this for my nine-year-old nephew, just eat one ingredient foods. It's right, whole real, foods. Real easy concept. You yeah. know, how many ingredients in an apple? How many one. ingredients in brown rice? How many ingredients in chicken? How many ingredients in salmon? It, it's, it's really common sense. Yeah, like normal meals, Ch salmon, broccoli, and maybe a potato. There you go. Just like what they show you. Those are normal meals. They don't come out of a box. This is how we all used to eat. And I think that's what people need to realize. How did your grandparents eat? How did your parents eat? There weren't processed foods back then. They had to eat whole foods. So, okay. Well, I think we're going to bring on Nurse Amber in, a, I mean, a Coach Amber in a second. <laughs> but I just wanted to, uh, before this, uh, this little uh, message here. Do you have a question or comment for Dr. Reese? You can either call in to talk live or you can leave an email or voicemail for next week on peaceoverpain.com. Do you have oh. a question? <laughs> Shouldn't start again. Repeat it. Okay. Bring on, so bring on the nurse. Bring on the, <laughs> the coach, the coach. Okay. So how are you, Coach Amber? I'm pretty good. Um, sorry about that little misstep there, <laughs> but um, I'm just so excited to have you on the show. Um, I think it's important. Uh, we wanted to bring you on to introduce you to our audience, because I know a lot of people, you comment a lot and you talk to a lot of people in the group. So I wanted, you know, we both wanted to bring you on, show your face and talk to you a little bit about, you know, how you got involved in this. 
what you do with the clinic and, and some of the things that you run into while you're talking, you know, while you're talking to clients. So, so, so tell us a little bit about how did you meet Dr. Reese? How did you get involved with the program? You know, and uh, you know, you know, just give us a little background on you. All right. So I met Dr. Reese, um, it's probably about seven years ago now. Um, I was going through some health issues and really just going to doctor after doctor and they could never really figure out was what was I had high blood pressure. I was diagnosed since I was like 23. So I was really young. Um, and of course they medicated me right away. And then I started having just like pain in my leg, pain in my side. And every time I would go to my doctor, she had no idea. Um, and my last straw was my blood pressure was really high. I was in a ton of pain. And she told me she had nothing else for me. She didn't know what else to do. She didn't know where to direct me. So um, I heard about Dr. Reese and I started going through like his testimonials and I found some really great stuff that I just figured, you know what, I'm going to give it a shot. He was running a program that I thought would be great. And sure enough, I started his program and like halfway through, I got off my high blood pressure medication I was feeling no more pain, anxiety went away, and I was just feeling amazing. So and didn't you say you mentioned this to me that it was the it was the tumor video that it was. Yes. Yes. I saw that video. I, you know, because I looked at a bunch of testimonials and then the, my the breaking point for me, I was like, I saw the video about the tumor and I was like, wow, if he can help that woman get rid of her tumor, uh, he could definitely help me with what I'm going through. So no more questions after that. I signed right up. Yeah. Signed the, right. The, yeah. The original 120 program. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's right. There was a version of this before uh before this new one. So great. And so since you you went on the program and it worked for you, obviously it really helped you out. Yes, very quickly. Oh, great. Her, her sister too, who overcame yep. asthma. Yes. Yeah, she sure did. Wow. So you have two family members that got into the, and so after that, you, you just decided to stick around and work with Dr. Reese on some of his other projects. Oh yeah, definitely. Great, great, great. And so now you're, you're here now with us in the Peace Over Pain Clinic. You're obviously, you're, you're on the, uh, on the program now, right? The, right. the, uh, the 90 essential and the other supplements. So you're doing it yourself along with the postural therapy. And, um, so you decide to come and Dr. Reese says, Hey, I'm starting this new thing. I'm writing this book. Do you want to come help out? So now you're here with the clinic. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about what you do in the peace over pain clinic, you know, what you do with clients and, and some of the things that you guys, uh, you know, how you, how you work them through the program. So basically, um, you know, I'm just here all around to offer support. So I welcome people into the group. Um, I reach out to them, see if they have any questions or, you know, direct them to um, different things that they're interested in. I discuss programs with them get them signed up for programs. And, you know, at that point, I, I'm their coach, um, you know, and I offer customized nutrition plans and meal plans and just really support 24 seven. Right. Literally, because right now she's working with someone from Australia. So, you know, the time difference. Oh yeah. Last night, 10 o'clock at night. I'm, you know, I'm on a phone call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we just make it work. Right. Well, that's great. Great. And like, so people come to you. Do you find right away that they're a little, they have a little trouble, uh, you know, getting started, you know, quitting the poor four, uh, th yeah. you know, things like that. Do you get resistance? Yeah, definitely. I mean, some people are really ready to jump right in and, you know, they have, they've struggled for long enough and they're just ready to go for it. But there's always going to be those issues here and there where, you know, it's, it's hard to adjust and make those changes. So we just we work through it and I, I offer suggestions and give tips and, you know, just support them get through um, that transition period. Right, right. And it's like the beginning. That's probably usually the hardest part. Right. Yeah. Getting... So like once you get going, you know, and, and you start 
doing a little research on your own and figuring out what works for you and what doesn't, then it becomes easier. Right. Right. And then, um, so they come to you, you're there for them during the full 120 days, right? Yes. And if they have any issues or questions, they can call you or text you. Yep. And, and then, um, you, you know, the first thing you do is you tell them about the 90 essential nutrients and what other supplements they may need along with that. Absolutely. And you, and you discuss the core four with them, right? Oh, like, <laughs> the, and then, and then, so what you also said, you do like meal plans and, and help with figuring out, you know, their regimen and stuff. So I don't think a lot of people know, but through the clinic, there's a ton, you know, of recipes and different ways to cook that are available that we have available that you can provide to these people when there's they over, do come and say, you know, over hundred, oh, I think. Yeah, there's over, you know, so because you, yeah, you're going to get people who say, oh, how do I, what do I eat instead of the gluten? What do I eat instead of the fried? Well, here you go, you know. And not only is the food healthier for you, but it also works in conjunction with the healing. So you're going to tell them certain type of foods that are going to work well with their, their 90 essential nutrients and that are going to help with whatever they are, their symptoms are pretty much. Right. Yeah. And that's, well, that's, that's a pretty cool thing. Now, um, the poor four, I guess we're talking about today, yes. right? So gluten, oil, fried, and fake. What would you say that maybe even yourself as a client and, and that the clients, what would you say is the most difficult of the poor four? What does the people have the most difficulty with? Uh, I think most people, it's oils. I know myself, I mean, obviously each one, there was a little bit of difficulty, but overall oil has been the toughest to get rid of, right. um, you know, because it's, it's in a lot of stuff. So even, I know one point I was really excited. I found these, these wraps that were like very natural. Um, and I looked at it and I'm like, Oh, nope, there's oil in there. Can't have that. So <laughs> it's a little tricky, but it's really important just to like really you know, uh, read ingredients, but I do find that most people struggle with that, with the oil. With the oil. I agree with you. That was my biggest struggle too, because I use a lot of like hemp oil and coconut oil. And I'm like, right. well, those are healthy. Those are natural. Well, you know, I'm not squeezing the hemp. So right. it, it had to come from somewhere to get to me, you know? Um, and I did do some research. There are some oils that oxidize less than others, but Oil oxidation is a real thing, you know, it is a real thing and you can Google it and look it up. Uh, but yeah, so I figured, yeah, that was even the hardest for me. Um, and now how about yourself? The gluten was that, was that, is that an issue for people? Do you find people slip up on that? Like they can go without it for a couple of weeks and then they say i had to have pizza man i couldn't help it you know or i had to have a piece of bread with the pot with the you know chicken parmesan or whatever do you find that um sometimes i know for myself personally gluten wasn't that hard to give up but you like what was hard about it is like not going to restaurants um yeah. that's a hard part and i think that's what most people struggle with when it comes to the gluten but gluten itself I mean I find some people you know it is a struggle for them for me that wasn't as hard hmm. right right yeah no, me a, neither a, a problem I, I yeah. think somewhere down the line we'll do a whole episode on restaurants it's definitely a problem yeah 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 because you don't know how they cook their food and and what ingredients are in it, it there's a lot of different things about restaurants you really got to be careful about but you know i think we all just you know discussed this before it's always just better to cook your own food you know pretty much and not go to restaurants and it's cheaper you know honestly i mean i know there's that whole social thing about restaurants you know and dating and all that kind of stuff but you can go to a coffee shop you know coffee's not on the poor for so you can, 
<laughs> you can have a cup of that. <laughs> but you know, you know, you know what the problem could be with coffee, though. <laughs> What's that? The, the container that it's in. Usually metal, but why? What is uh plastic? Yeah, well, it it's plastic with this special chemical thing that they put it in on the inside. That's oh, you mean why, the cups? Yeah, that's why Starbucks and, you know, California makes you put the warnings on everything now. Huh. So it actually says it on Starbucks. Uh, no, those are paper, uh, aren't they? Yeah, but they spray the paper with some special stuff. It's a wax. Too. It used to be wax, but they don't use wax anymore. Because they're, 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 they're containing a hot liquid, so they have to, like, reinforce it. Oh, so it's the spray stuff that they put on the inside of it. So you're better, but you, know, you put it in a cup, you know, you know, you go to an actual coffee shop that serves it in, in ceramic mugs. That would be good or glass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what you do. I, I know you're talking about your typical Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks. But I would just tell coffee drinkers, just make it at home. Yeah. Make it at home, put it in a mug. But um, yeah, so restaurants are, uh, you know, they are, they do become a big issue when you get up, you was trying to get off the poor four. Um, but I think people need to know both, both from you and Amber, how important to the program and to having success with this program is getting off the poor four, but not only just like getting off them, like cheat every now and then, but making sure that it is a non-negotiable, right? You say that a lot, non-negotiable. That's right. So you're, what it is, yeah. You're, you're either in or you're out. And, and hey, I, I don't want to take anyone's money that isn't about it, about it, as they used to say 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And so you got to make that commitment if you want success with the program right right because you're, you're just wasting your money and and then you're you know and then someone could just turn around and say oh well, your program didn't work it works if you execute it right you know right and amber have you ever had a client who said no i i just can't do this and they and they keep coming back with oh i had a slip on bread Oh, I, I, you know, I had a, a, some fried chicken, you know, do you have that happen sometimes? And do you see that it does set people back? Yeah. I mean, there's definitely sometimes a hesitation, but I just, I mean, I let them know if, if you're going to continue to eat the poor four, you're wasting your money um, and your time because you're not going to, you're, you know, you're getting these nutrients, but you're not properly absorbing so what's the point, you know, so I, I really just stress to them, like, you have to be all in. Um, and for the most part, as far as I know, on my end, they follow through. Yeah. And right. I, I think that's one of the beauties of having a 120 day program. And this is why I brought it back is because psychologically they're saying, okay, only 63 more days. Okay, only 42 more days. Okay, only, you know, it, it's a countdown. And it's not for life until they say, okay, this is it for life. Right. So it's now, almost like a trial in a way. It's almost like they're, they're experimenting with a new way for four months. Right. Now, um, you, the program is 120, but I think people need to understand that even after you finish the 120, you don't stop taking the nutrients or stop, you know, go back to eating the poor four and think everything's okay. Once you've done the 420, what your hope is that these have become habits ingrained and that you continue the maintenance that it takes to continue your healing. We yeah, we can tell you're a cannabis guy because you said 420. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> so I yeah, people will learn real fast that when they get off these poor four foods and then they bring them back in, whether it's a cheat or whether it's voluntary, their body will react. This happened to me not long ago. I had gluten by accident. 
I, I, I made a mistake and I ate something that I shouldn't have. And it didn't dawn on me that there was gluten in it. Right. And it messed me up for two weeks. All right. Yeah, I personally haven't had it in a while, so I don't know what it would do to me, but I could imagine it would uh, not do not do well. And I'm not, I'm not celiac at all. I've just been off gluten for a year or longer, maybe longer. And then I slipped up and the body was just like, whoa, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, and that's, that's how powerful these, these <laughs> poor four foods are. And it's what I was telling one of my cousins at my reunion is like, you get off these foods, you got to have a funeral. Yeah. You got to have a funeral for these four foods and say, thank you for your service. No more. Have a nice life. Yeah. And you'd be amazed what it opens up to you when you eliminate those four foods, how many more better foods you find out are actually out there and how many more better ways to cook are actually out there than frying and deep frying, you know, then, uh, and how much, how good food tastes when it doesn't have oil in it, you know, it's so I think people, yeah, through the 120, they get that experience and they'll carry it through with them for the rest of their lives. And I'm sure if they ever have a problem, they can always, you know, call, go back into the Facebook group and, and reconnect with the clinic. You know, we hope people, even after their 120 days, will definitely stick around and hang out and then become almost like mentors within the clinic, right? Yeah. They can answer questions for people. Right. Uh, once they've been through it, you know, so I'm very excited and I, you know, I'm very happy to talk to you, Amber. I'm very excited about what you guys are doing. I know next week we're going to talk to Rain, who is our postural therapist. So we're going to be getting everybody involved in the clinic on the air. So I'm really looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to do some questions. Amber, if you want to hang out with us and, and stick around while we do some questions, uh, we did get some questions off social media, but before that, let's hear a word from our sponsor. Have you read Peace Over Pain yet? This short but powerful book reveals how to eliminate chronic pain and or illness faster than any other known therapeutic approach. Download the Peace Over Pain book for only $4.95 and gain instant access to the ebook version, audiobook version, and a video training with Dr. Reese. Go to peaceoverpain.com and start reading or listening right now. This is the information you've been praying for. Okay. So yeah, just remember the Peace Over Pain book is available at peaceoverpain.com or you join the Facebook group. Okay, let's get to the questions. This one comes from, well, let's do it since it's about the poor four foods and we pretty much already, already uh, answered this, but Sammy wants to know getting off the four, four foods seems so hard. Yet it, can, it can't be because you did it and many others. How hard was it for you, Kevin, to get off the poor four foods? It wasn't hard at all. I'm a disciplined person, so it wasn't hard for me at all. Um, I, like Amber mentioned earlier, am definitely a burrito guy, a wrap guy. So I was always, you know, having, you know, making wraps and stuff and, so that was pretty much the last thing to go with me as well. And being like, oh man, there's oils in that. There's oils in that, you know? And then the last, you know, then you can use the corn ones. They taste awful. And, and eventually I just got rid of, of that altogether. And I just started using flackers as almost like a chip to dip. Oh. And so I still had my Mexican fix but no oils. Uh, what were those you used? Flackers. It's a flax seed cracker. Oh, I'm going to have to get some of them. They're like $19 a chip, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That's true. But <laughs> yeah, I think for me, it was uh, the oil because I used to like a lot of hummus 
and things yeah. like that. And then, you know, you're the one who actually told me, he said, look at your label, there's oils and hummus. And I'm like, oh, wow, yeah, I got to give up hummus, man. <laughs> and, you know, that was, was kind of the hummus the... too. I was in the hummus too. I definitely, yeah. yeah. And I've made it myself without oil, but it's just not as good. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I just can't get the texture right. But uh, so I just gave that up. Yeah, but for me, that was it. And Amber, I think you said the oils were the hardest too. Right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. But it takes a little discipline. But if you really want to get your health back, it's something you're going to do, you know. And I'm sure if your doctor, your quote unquote medical uh, monopoly doctor told you to do it, you'd probably listen. But um, OK, so here's one. This is I'm a longtime follower of yours. And I hear you mention your dad a bunch of times. Plunce, you mention him in the Peace Over Pain book. How come? It's a good question. I, I mentioned my dad a lot. He was in my first book too, because he is what I don't want to be as far as health. And so the examples right there in front of me, you know, he lost his lungs pretty much at 60 and was forced out of his job because of emphysema. And then now he's, he lost his kidney. So now I'm driving him to dialysis. And right. it's, it's like, don't want that. And so I use him as an example a lot. And he's been my best case study because I've experimented on him through the years. Because every now and again, he'll be like, all right, I'll try that. And he's a great example of the gluten in the poor four foods. I got him off the poor four foods and the doctor downgraded his emphysema, his COPD from stage four to stage three. That was inside of three months. Now, he wasn't disciplined enough. So eventually he started nibbling back with some gluten and some oils and this and that. And, but if he had listened, if, or I should retract that because he says he does listen. He just doesn't always follow. <laughs> nah. So if he had just followed through, then I think he'd be in a much different situation right now. But, you know, like I talk about in the book, we have an onboard computer and we're running off of our own program and he's clearly programmed to eat certain foods. That's, that's what gives him his sucre. That's what gives him his comfort. So there's a lot of people out there like that and we have to just find acceptance with that. And so that's what I'm doing now as I'm driving him to dialysis. Right. So, you know, the people don't understand that's also a way for you to express, you know, you've got, it's got to be a little frustrating for you. Do you know what I mean? It's, These are your parents. It's mindfulness training mm. all the way through to accept and to let go. Right. Because it, it's, you know, I often give the analogy that, you know, it's like, I'm a police officer and you're a criminal. <laughs> it's like my family's criminals and I'm a police officer it's like ah you know but you gotta just let go and 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 let it be because everyone's making their own choices and and you know it is what it right is. it is what it is you know and uh, I can certainly relate you know I went through both with both my parents died you know and in the case of my mother, I was aware of health nutrition and I tried to talk to her about it when she was diagnosed with cancer and she didn't want to hear it. You know, she just went and did what the doctor said and uh, died a year later. Didn't change anything. So very frustrating. So I do get it. And I understand why you would put it in the book. It's very important. Okay. Here's one from Jai on Facebook. Is beer bad? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> there's gluten in it. Right. So, you know, hence the term beer belly, which is really wheat belly. Mm -hmm. However, however, 
There are Japanese beers made from rice. In fact, I think sake is made of rice. If yes, I'm that's a rice saying. wine. Yeah. Yeah. So I would just say switch over to that so that you're not consuming gluten. That's all. And, and I've seen even some now here, craft beers companies are making gluten-free beer where they're taking the wheat out of it and substituting it with something else. You know, I know some are even putting hemp in it instead. So people are more aware. It may not taste the same, but I think if you like beer and want beer, you know, you got to really, like you said, look at Japanese options or find some of these new gluten-free beers out there. But that's a huge source of gluten. Huge. Yeah. 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 Huge. But hey, so, there's, no, there's no gluten in wine. There's no gluten in vodka. Right. There you go. So you can always switch to that if you need alcohol, right? <laughs> yeah, but that's a huge one. That's like I you had, say. The beer I had a client some months ago that was a heavy drinker. And man, when I said no beer, he was resistant. Um, and I was just like, just drink wine. And he's like, man, I ain't going to the club and drinking wine, you know? <laughs> so, you know, it, you know, we all make our, our decisions, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a tough one. There's your answer. Yes, Jai. Beer is bad. Okay. So uh, I don't know what your video, you mentioned the dogma in diets in your video yesterday. What do you think dogma is doing? What is the effect? Yeah. So when people are out here, you know, promoting diets like they're you know a new religion what you're doing is you're setting people up to borrow the information and you're setting up subgroups so that's what creates you know the vegan community and then the fruitarian community and the keto community and the carnivore community and now you have all these communities of people who are just borrowing the information and they're they're talking about it like like they're promoting a religion and you know there's no dogma in nutrition nutrition is very straight you need 90 essential nutrients you need to absorb the 90 essential nutrients you need fat you know carbohydrates and then you know protein is a builder like there's no dogma behind this this is straight up science that has been observed for the last 150 years right so it doesn't you know i hate to use the word cult but it, you're right like the keto people become kind of a cultish following you know and there's a dogma to their diet that you have to stick to this or you're not keto or i, I find it even more in the vegan i mean oh, i find oh, forget uh, about it the i vegan, mean the vegans are Radical vegans. I know people who are vegan who aren't radical, but radical yeah. vegans are. Yeah, and I and I, you know, I was kind of like that my first maybe two years in, and then I said this is crazy, and I backed off and I became almost like an undercover vegan. Right, which I have too. You know, I I really did. I stopped going to all those groups and and all those different things. So you just think the dogma is too strict and too straight up because like i know in your diets you can go keto if you want you can eat meat if you want you can be a vegan if you want you can be a uh, you know a fruititarian if you want as long as well, you get the 90 essential and you take out the poor four well, you don't tell anyone that they have to be a certain way yeah i mean to a certain extent because you still need fat so fruitarian wouldn't, would be very difficult because the only fat you're going to get is avocados and coconuts and it's right. just not enough. So I, I would say, no, you can't be vegan on our plan. You could be vegetarian. Well, this will bring me to my next question, but go, yeah, yeah. So you, you, could, you could be, you could be vegetarian um, and still have eggs and butter. Right. But right. it's, it's, Again, it's science, man. There's 
fat has essential fatty acids and they're essential for a reason. But the profile in avocados and coconut are like this. And the profile in butter, eggs, and red meat are like this and salmon. Yeah. So yeah. it's if you're a strict vegan, you're at an automatic disadvantage in life. Automatic disadvantage. And I know that irritates some people, but it it's just science. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. And that brings but you us don't to have it. to eat. I want to be clear. You don't, you don't have, have to, eat, to meat. eat. You don't have to eat animals if you don't want to. Right. But there are some animal byproducts that will change your life. Right. And that brings us to our last question. And it, it's, it's real simple. Why aren't you vegan anymore? This is from Adam on Instagram. Why aren't you vegan anymore? You've kind of almost answered it, but. Well, it's, it's quite a story. I mean, it was a, it was a process of about two years because I was contemplating it for a while. And one of the things, there's two main things that really woke me up to this besides the nutrition. I started gardening and I just thought it was the most amazing thing. I had a trellis and I had watermelon and squash vines. And every day I'd go out there and it climbed the vine. I mean, it, the vine climbed the trellis. Right. And Joe, I'm just like, this is amazing. This thing is so alive. And then one day I went to assist it and move it. And it bit me. No joke. It had a defense mechanism where it popped up prickers and it bit me, so to speak. And I'm like, whoa. And I'm just like, you know what? These things are alive too. And here we are talking about don't eat the animals, don't eat the animals. And we're eating plants that are alive. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they don't have organs and they don't have eyes. They're different. They're not as conscious as an animal, but there's a hierarchy. There's a hierarchy to consciousness. Right. And so, you know, there's minerals, there's plants, there's animals, there's us. That's the hierarchy. And so that was a, a big awakening for me. And then I met two people that I really respect that were really into Native American culture. And they really opened my eyes to the philosophy of you still respect the animal. You still love the animal. The animal is providing to you. So Native Americans, they would kill bison, but the bison provided for the whole village, not just food. Right. Their teepees, their clothes, everything. So humans have been using animals for survival for centuries. And so this philosophy from the Native Americans really opened my mind and gave me a change of heart and made me really understand that because I was pretty much vegan because I didn't want to harm animals. Right. It wasn't necessarily for health. I didn't want to harm animals. They were my friends. Mm -hmm. But Native Americans, they're friends as well. And it's, it's just about us living together. And if you go to a farm where they raise cattle and you go to a good farm, they raise them and give them great lives. And when the time is up, it's time for them to be slaughtered. And then it's not for fun. It's for survival. It's right. what it is. Animal fat is key in human health. And that's the big realization I had. It's not about eating meat. It's about eating animal fat. If you give me a lean piece of chicken or a lean piece of turkey, what? that's not really doing anything for me. That's protein. Give me fat. <laughs> give me the fat. Give me a ribeye, give me salmon, give me eggs. That's where the fat is. Fat is what 
provides for human beings along with carbohydrates. And so this information was really eye-opening for me. And I finally flipped the switch and decided to go the other way. And that's why I'm not vegan anymore. Right. And have you found it's uh, made improvements in your health? Absolutely. Look at my hair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, this is true. I got a full head of hair at 43. And, you know, my hair was always short before because it just, it wasn't full of life. And now it is. I mean, uh, yeah, animal fat is a game changer. And I think that's just, I can't say it enough times that it's not about eating meat. It's about eating animal fat mm. and organs. I'm not, I know we fan. talked about organs, right? Yeah, I'm not a fan of eating organs. If they have a weird taste. They really the liver do. is awful. Yeah. But they, they are stocked with nutrients. Liver is mm. like, forget about it. Liver is so nutrient dense that you can't eat it every day. Right. You're like OD on nutrients. Right. It, so it, that's, it's all, it's like medicine in a way. It, it, it's like, you could almost put liver in the same category as CBD or right. herbs. Wow. Wow. Okay. That's good to know. I just still won't eat it, but that's good to know. <laughs> so how about you, Amber? Were you vegetarian, vegan or anything before you started? Or did you just kind of adjust your regular diet to the poor four? Um, so I was, when I was on the original 120, I went plant-based and <clears throat> that was the first time, like I've messed around with before going, um, vegetarian, but that was the first time, like really committing to going plant-based. So I did that. And um, kind of did that for a while, for a few years. And then just kind of now I'm at the point where I've added eggs, um, butter, salmon. So kind of slowly getting into it. Right. Yeah, but That's I, where I am too. When I mentioned the fats, you know, she gets a little. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. That's Not kind of where I'm at. Yeah. Yeah, I I was full vegan for seven years almost. And, uh, you know, not only speaking to Dr. Reese, but speaking to my own doctor, you know, through my blood work, they just kind of went to me and said, listen, man, we know you don't want to harm animals. And, you know, you have all these spiritual beliefs about eating animals. But listen, you would do well if you just added some eggs to your diet. Just add eggs. And I said, you know, it took me a little bit, but I finally went around and did it. And the truth of the matter is I actually like eggs, you know, so <laughs> that wasn't that hard for me. And then, then they came back and said, now, you know, maybe you ought to add some high, high EFA fish, like salmon yeah. and stuff like that to your diet. And, you know, I did, I finally got around, I, I added some, I use smoked salmon. I tend to like that better than like cooked salmon. And I will eat some shrimp lobster crab and things like that and salmon seafood. i still haven't yes yeah, seafood there's some seafood i won't eat that i just don't like never liked even when i was a meat eater i just still haven't been able to bring myself to 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 beef chicken or pork yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. i just well, haven't even been able to yeah I, I totally understand you know it took me a little bit but yeah chicken and turkey is you know, almost oh useless in a way. I mean, it's just, it's just, you know, but bison and, and cow, that's where the, that's where the fat is, man. And uh, deer as well. Deer doesn't have fat either. Right. It's a, a lot of people don't eat venison, but yeah. I get you. Yeah. Yeah. Deer and, and elk are very athletic animals. They're just muscle. lean. There's, there's no, there's no fat. Yeah. So it's like, unless you're truly, truly in survival mode and you're hunting, then I don't see a point really in eating them. Okay. So listen, guys, we're almost out of time. So Amber, real quick, how do people get in touch with you if they want to uh, hear more about the program? And then we'll, we'll sign off for next week. I want to thank you guys. 
Um, so you can find me in our Facebook group, the group that we're in now. Um, you can also text me or call me at 860-494-2407. Great. Great. And coach, I mean, coach Amber, thank you again for coming on the show. We'll be in here with rain next week. Dr. Reese, it's always a pleasure. We will see you all next week. Thanks for watching the Peace Over Pain podcast live inside our clinic's Facebook group. Be sure to submit a question or comment for next week's show at peaceoverpain.com. Also, perform some goodwill and tell a friend in pain that you found their solution. Refer them to the Peace Over Pain podcast and the Peace Over Pain book and help them move closer to their miracle.